Hello, welcome back to the activation phase. I'm JP. I'm joined today by Tim. Hi, I'm Tim. <laughs> classic, classic start. All right, <laughs> uh, we are talking about the Iberians. We're blasting our way through the Age of Hannibal here. We've got yes. the possibly the trickiest faction in the book. Um, I would say that, uh, yeah, I don't understand anything about this board. <laughs> so, Tim, do you want to give a brief description about the play style of this board and like what? Why would people play Iberians? Right. So, um, I think I have a sarcastic explanation, and then the normal one. I'll just start start with the normal one. I feel like they they are very tricky. They have a trick up their sleeves for basically any situation. They can be fast. They have multi activations, um, so I feel like they they are a dice efficient, well working warband if you can make it work because it's also very complex. And that was the normal explanation. And the sarcastic one is, if you don't really like the turn based style of saga and you would prefer a alternating activation type like game, then the Iberians are for you because they basically play out their turn in their opponent's turn. So. Yeah, they're kind of kind of very special. Don't follow any rules that, ex that existed so far. So, yeah, no, not not not. Uh, they, they they're cra they're crazy. They're definitely crazy. All right, they are crazy. Um, thanks. <laughs> like, let's uh, let's move on. Let's have a, a quick shout out. We uh, last <laughs> time we shouted out someone from uh, from South Africa, and they got in touch with us. That was very cool. So always super nice cool. See. Yeah, it's always nice to kind of get some feedback from real people. Um, so we actually looked and we have four listeners from Mexico. So hi, guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Let us know how the Mexican saga scene is going. I really hope these are Mexicans and not people on holiday who are just downloading it <laughs> from Mexico. But if, if it is, I hope you had a nice holiday in Mexico. Uh, right. Either way. But uh, anyway. I think we'll move on. Let's go yes. to the... Uh, yeah, who are these Iberian people? What are they about? You have to answer that yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the Iberians. Unsurprisingly, they're from the Iberian Peninsula. So, they uh, essentially the tribes that were I guess, indigenous to the Iberian Peninsula got slapped around by the Carthaginians and then got slapped around by the Romans. However, they never really got conquered. So it's a pretty wild place, even though uh, it's been a, a place of colonization for a very long time by the end of the Roman Empire. Never quite quite managed to crush them. And the play style of this board does kind of reflect that, like very sneaky, guerrilla-style, hit-and-run um, type, type warband. So it's kind of nice to see that back in the... Um, in the, in the the battle board itself, and uh, they're definitely causing some problems for a uh, kind of like a larger force that's trying to trying to crush them. So nice, nice and fluffy, as you would say. Do you want to tell us how the Iberians can be equipped? Warlord can can be mounted on a horse or can be just walking around on foot with his sword and board. The Hearthguard have to be mounted on a horse. The warriors can be uh, on foot or on a horse, or they can have slings but the amount of warriors that you have on horse cannot exceed the number of warriors that you have on foot and then the levies can take javelins so a i think middle of the field not too crazy uh with the equipment options quite quite balanced not uh yeah not not a million options but also not just just one the iberians do have a special rule so right. uh, this is kind of what makes them it's very special. It's called Gorilla. This replaces the activation pool ability on the top right-hand corner of the battle board. And um, it's uh, triggered by something called Gorilla Markers. So several advanced abilities on the Iberian battle board grant you Gorilla Markers. That can be any random tokens. You don't need to buy any specific ones. When you gain the markers, you can place them on your board. You're capped out at 10 Gorilla Markers. And at the start of your turn, you must discard all of your unused markers. Therefore, you're kind of, you know, getting getting them by playing abilities, and you want to spend them before your uh, opponent's turn ends. That covers the guerrilla markers. Let's get on to the yes. battle board itself yes. then. 
<laughs> just the standard ones with the exception of the activation pool being uh, replaced by the gorilla system so um that's kind of a that's kind of a big change gorilla so this is a activation reaction ability so trigger this ability after an enemy unit's activation has been resolved discard two gorilla markers to activate one of your units not mercenaries each unit can only be activated by gorilla once per turn <laughs> right so this is basically your way of activating up to like five of your units in your opponent's turn when he is doing stuff and like denying him certain certain actions he wanted to take or or whatever so this is the this is the big thing that makes the the iberians very complicated because you can after each activation of your opponent you can choose to activate one of your own units or not um and i think this is this is like one of the most important things on this battleboard and it's it's obviously a standard ability so you can play it like up to five times uh, because you can have a max of 10 gorilla markers and it costs two gorilla markers to activate a unit it's it's pretty good yeah so is it it is an activation does that mean you can uh you can charge you can move and you can rest am i reading everything this correctly? yes all right, that's pretty pretty flexible. Pretty good. Next up, and that, this is the first advanced saga ability on the board. It's called Second Wind, and I think the the Sassanids also have an ability that's called Second Wind. But I think we're I does. think we're running out of names here. Yep, yep, All yep. Better boards. Yeah. yeah, this one definitely does something else though. Okay, so it costs two uncommons. It's an activation ability. Remove a fatigue from every friendly unit within medium of your warlord gain one gorilla marker for each fatigue you removed so this obviously is a multi die ability which i think can be incredibly worth it because if you kind of play it well and you're and you manage to accumulate some fatigue around your wallet or you're just in the in your front line and you have the chance to move your wallet up and then use this ability since you not only remove the fatigue for two uncommons, but you also gain gorilla markers for each fatigue you removed, um, it can be incredible value because removing like each fatigue removed is basically one activation that you you pay for, and then every two gorilla markers you get are also one activation that you get. So if you if you can get this going on like four units because you double activated your wallow to get there and have three units that are like standing there with one fatigue. That's four activations, that's, uh, that's four fatigues gone, and uh, four Gorilla Markers gained, which are two activations in your opponent's turn, and that's incredible. That's just, that's like six activations for two, for two uncommons, which is, which is insane value if you can, if you can uh, make this happen, which I don't think is too hard, to be honest with the Iberians. Yeah, I think it's also nice because it's not like a, you're, a, you're not activating to rest, you're activating just to remove the fatigue, so... Eventually, you can just get rid of, uh, yeah, well, I guess two fatigues very easily yeah, from easily. Uh, a whole yeah. bunch of uh, units. And then you don't really lose anything because you can activate them in your opponent's turn using Gorilla. Yep. So like, it's uh, disturbingly efficient. Uh, I, yep. don't like the, I don't like the prospect of facing these guys. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. All right. So... Uh, the next one is bait. This is using a common dice. Uh, this is activation ability. Choose one of your units, gain one gorilla marker and one extra gorilla marker for each enemy unit within M of the chosen unit. So you don't actually do anything. You just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little, you just check. You're like, yes, I have guys who are enemy units within, within M. I get some gorilla markers. That's it. All right. I guess you're just loading up for uh, to use it in your opponent's turn. So sure. Yeah. For a common ability, you can. Uh, I guess you automatically like you would only do this if you're uh, if you have an enemy unit there. So you basically spend a common dice to get a uh, at least one um, activation in your opponent's turn. Yeah. So the 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 most important thing about this one is I think it's against most armies in in Hannibal. I think it's easy to to gain like to get two or three like yeah it's pretty easy to get three 
of your opponent's units into into range to gain four gorilla markers for this, which is which is gonna uh like which is which is gonna be as efficient as having two activations. And one very important thing about this one is you sometimes you can literally bait your opponent into finishing off a unit instead of going for a new one because they don't want you to be able to trigger this. I had this played against like into me with a two-man unit of levy standing in my lines, which just resulted in because I either that was like in the last two turns, I either sacrificed one of my very uh like expensive dice at that point and one of a one activation to finish off that unit, uh, but by which basically did nothing for me anymore. Or I can I could just not do it and my opponent gained like three or four gorilla markers each turn um from 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 the bait. So this one is quite literally making your units bait. Yeah, that's pretty uh pretty good actually, because you like especially the last few turns you you're very often in yeah. that kind of situation where you just can't be bothered to, to kill off the last guy. Yeah. So yeah, that's a very good point. And then now you kind of have to do that, unfortunately, unless they're gonna start activating like crazy in your turn. Yeah, and even if they if they just gain like even if there's just two units in your uh within range that's three gorilla three gorilla markers gaining like three more from the second win from the ability before you already have three full activations in your opponent's turn or like three dice yep good times yes all right next up is like shadows it costs an uncommon and it's a orders reaction ability once during each, each melee or shooting attack, initiated by an enemy during this turn, instead of using a Saga ability, you can spend one Gorilla Marker to discard two of your opponent's attack dice. So, when used against shooting, this is, this is crazy annoying because you, sometimes you end up with, with like odd numbers of, uh, of Gorilla Markers or you know you only want to act activate two of your of your units anyway in the opponent's turn, but you ended up with like seven, seven gorilla, and so like two, two shoots or like two shooting attacks or like whatever, three, three things coming your way, you can really take the wind out of that a little bit, and especially out of shooting attacks, um, that's uh, two, two, two dice gone definitely are definitely going to hurt. I think. Yeah, definitely. That's really, um, that's really sneaky, actually. Yeah. I like it's it. like. It's it's just it's just one die to basically tune down three of your opponent's attacks or even five or ten if you wanted to. Um, this this has a lot of potential, definitely. Yeah, so it is an orders reaction. So I guess there it's it's not like you can completely neuter a unit if they're, for example, closing ranks or something. But still, it definitely takes the edge off any attack. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay, so the next ability is coordination. This is a common or an uncommon ability. This is an activation ability. Choose a hearth guards or warriors mounted unit and an infantry unit within short of each other. There cannot be more than twice as many figures in the infantry unit as the cavalry unit. Activate, activate these two units for a move, starting with the cavalry unit. During this move, the infantry unit gains the mounts Forces special rule, but must end its movement within short of the mounted unit. After these activations have been completed, gain one gorilla marker. So essentially, you turn a infantry unit that's next to a, a mounted unit into a mounted unit for a move. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty sneaky. Uh, definitely worthwhile setting it up. I guess it's not even that uh, restrictive, given that you need to. Uh, yeah, you can do it with twice as many figures in the infantry unit, or not more than twice as many uh, figures in the infantry unit as cavalry unit. So even like a four pack of hearth guard, if you choose to take it, can, uh, can transport a, uh, a point of warriors. So pretty pretty yeah. legit. Add some flexibility. Um, yeah, interesting. I, interesting. I think the the. The obvious combo here, at least in my opinion, is to have like six hearth guard or warriors on horses, um, taking or bringing along twelve levies with their javelins. Because then the levies have a like a move of L, and then they can throw the javelins with an M. So they they they're getting very annoying, and then they're also 
kind of in your in your opponent's lines and lobbies never die through one attack and then if they are left with like two or three dudes then you basically have your bait for the ability from before and they're probably just going to st stay there for the whole game and having your warriors or hearth guard move up is also not bad or anything yeah so, it's also just insane that you move two units l yep. with the common basically so and uh, and you get a gorilla marker which is half an activation yeah so that's a pretty like a lot of like you have to read a lot of text to understand what's going on but it's totally worth reading all that <laughs> those words it's 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 a in my opinion it's a god tier a uh, god tier uh, yeah ability it's so good almost a goth tier <laughs> right all right next up next up is falcata it's a melee ability that takes a rare, and it's only if you're the attacker. The enemy unit suffers a minus one penalty to their defense dice. So, this one I'm not super sure about because it's a rare, and since you cannot reroll your rares on this board anyway, um, it's not too bad to actually play them because there's no activation pool to reroll them. So, sometimes you're just stuck with a rare, and then this is a a okay place, I feel like, because going into into units that can close ranks, obviously this is a is this is amazing because like reducing their their saves by half is obviously very good, and going into units that close ranks, reducing their saves by a third is also okay, and yeah, overall overall good ability, and since you can't use your rares in many other places, you sometimes will probably play this. Yeah, agreed. It's also the first rare that's actually required on the yep. on the advanced ability so far. So the next one is Knowledge of the Terrain. Uh, you'll play this with an uncommon uh, dice, again, activation ability. Choose an area of uneven terrain within very short of one of your units. Until the start of the next turn, your units count it as open terrain during their move and charge. All right, I can kind of see this comboing very nicely with coordination. Absolutely. Um, I could see this like uh, being a, a standard lineup to transport a bunch of guys very quickly across some uneven terrain. So that's a definite plus there. Uh, and even uh, even without coordination, I think this is a uh, yeah, like you're so fast. Um, and as well, it's until the start of the next turn as well. So all your gorilla shenanigans will also. Uh, gain benefits from this ability. Yeah, I I agree. I think this is an amazing ability, which really uh, incentivizes you to bring hearth guard that are mounted or warriors that are mounted, because I feel like this opens up a lot of very cheeky things to do, um, and so it's it's a it's a great. Like it's a great ability if you build your army around it because if you don't have, bring that many horses anyway, you probably won't use this. But if you specialize in a more mounted army, then this is very good. All right, next up, a less complicated ability. I think it's called ambush. It's uh, it takes a it takes a common or uncommon, and it's a melee ability. Gain two attack dice. Gain one guerrilla marker. That's it. Shortest text on the board. <laughs> um, this one, this one is okay, I think, because you, as as stated before, one guerrilla marker is half an active, half an activation in your opponent's turn. So for a common, you gain two attack dice, which is already basically twice as good as the combat pool, and half an activation. So if you have your, if you know you're gonna be missing that one guerrilla marker because you're basically at like five or seven now and you want one more to have gain an extra activation, this is a good way to get it, even in your opponent's turn. Yeah, this is an, yeah, it's a pretty solid one, definitely. All right. Um the next one is Fala Rika. Uh, you can play this with just a common dice. This is a melee or shooting ability. After a melee or shooting attack is resolved, you gain one guerrilla marker for each casualty inflicted on your opponent to a maximum of six, or spend up to three guerrilla markers and gain two dice per marker spent. I guess there there are some um, probably with with bait and with uh, second wind, you can already get quite a few guerrilla markers. Uh, 
uh, I guess if you're shooting or uh, going into some levee, you'll definitely rack up the gorilla markers there as well. Uh, and then maybe um, probably one of the, except for the, the, the one we just had, the ambush, it's probably so far the only one where you actually gain a ton of, uh, or you can potentially gain a ton, uh, uh, some attack dice. So yeah. Um, so far, we've seen a lot of ways of getting guerrilla markers, uh, which have just kind of resulted in more activations in your opponent's turn. But now we're actually having a way of getting some some extra punch um, in your own turn. So yeah, why not? One thing to note maybe is that gaining six guerrilla markers, if you can manage it, uh, for a common is is insane. If you know you're going to go with into levies or into into warriors that can't close ranks because they have javelins or are mounted or something, then yeah, I think I think you you might not want to spend your other abilities that could potentially generate you uh, like gorillas, gorilla markers if if you know you can have this setup. And also, this one is is big if you want to go like in the the mind game route, <laughs> because if you if you stack up on gorilla markers and you have like eight or something, and your opponent starts their turn. And then they basically have to guess whether you want to use this to generate attack dice for when for when they attack you and you just want to blow a huge like throw a huge punch. Or if you want to if you want to use this after you spend some of your guerrilla markers to gain some more guerrilla markers to activate more units to get more stuff going. And I think this is yeah, this is this will always always give a little bit of doubt for to your opponent, which is obviously very good in saga always i think i think yeah as well as I, I, especially this is probably very useful in shooting as well because getting uh, attack dice and shooting is normally quite difficult in most yeah. boards but here you can yeah, you can get an insane amount of uh, additional dice uh, i guess you do have like the i get like a little cap uh, if you're doing it with a unit of uh warriors with sl slings or something but um, I think this is actually pretty legit as well for the, the sh kind of, if you want to go the, sh the more shooting uh, with slings or javelins route. Yeah, the the levies that you moved up with coordination that can now, that they, they moved L and can move, can throw medium now, um, can, can definitely, they generate six themselves probably, and can definitely generate six more through this if you wanted to. That is, that's not too bad. Pretty brutal uh, levy, actually. Yeah. Or for two common dice, potentially. Yep. All right. That's pretty brutal, actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up is Surprise Attack. It's an Ordus ability that takes a common and a rare. And at the start of your next turn, you gain one Gorilla Marker at the start of each melee in which one of your units is the attacker, or two markers if your unit has no fatigue. Units start their charge. Units start. Units that start their charge movement entirely within an area of uneven terrain get a plus one bonus to their attack dice. So I, I think this one, if you play it right, this is an auto play if you roll the rare because you can generate so much gorilla through this. Just because even in your opponent's turn, you're always going to be the attacker if you if you want to be because they get close. Or if if you manage to make them, they have to double, basically double activate to get to you. Then they activate once, and then you just activate and you attack, or or stuff like that. So you you can be the attacker so easily, and it's also not that hard to start your to start your movement within uh, with an uneven terrain. And it's also not that hard to have no fatigue, because that's what the what the second wind is for. So this one is. Huge, because all the guerrilla markers gained are extra activations that you don't have to spend dice on. So this one, I think this one is a, a core ability, which is obviously a two dice ability, but I think it's really good. Yeah, definitely. I guess it's um, just hope for that rare. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you're good to go. All right. You, you, don't, you don't need to play this to make your turn work, but just, just nice imagine. Buff, yeah. Yeah, just imagine for a second, you, in your opponent's turn, you spend two Gorilla Markers to 
charge with one of your units into them, and if they didn't have a fatigue, that's just two guerrilla markers back into your pocket. Like, that's that. That basically means that one other of your one other of your units can can do the same thing or can shoot extra hard with um, with the Falarika ability just before that. So, this is definitely good. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we're on to the last one. This is Sully Ferrum. This is uh, using a common or a rare. Again, activation ability. So this is for units without ranged weapons. Activate a unit or two units if you use a rare for a shooting attack with a range of M that generates no fatigue. Gain one gorilla marker or two if you used a rare. This is going to probably be used on a levy, <laughs> levy unit or something, or your if you decide to take warriors with slings because you're using a, uh, a common here. Only units without range weapons, right? <sighs> oh, well, that's actually even better. Yeah, way better. Way better. Way better. All right. I can, um, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> um, so essentially, you can give your mounted hearth guard javelins. You can give yep. your uh, warriors on horses javelins. So you can give your, I guess you can give your uh, warlord, your mounted warlord, or on foot javelins if you wanted to. So yep. very, very flexible, especially combined with some of the uh, movement abilities you can do. Um, ah, this, is, this is very nice. I'm not sure I would put the uh, rare on here unless I was uh, lining up uh, two shots, but... Like for a common, yeah, definitely. Just twelve warriors mounted, and then twelve warriors on foot move up with coordination, and then that's that's one die, and then then them throwing with a rare here. That's that's I know it's a rare, so yeah, but that's basically that's a rare and a common to gain two movements, two shoots with no fatigue. And three gorilla markers, so that's one and a half more activations. So, and your units standing there don't have like the javelin downside. They they are actual like warriors. They can do stuff, and you can charge your horse horse warriors in, and have your other warriors just standing around waiting to be charged in closing ranks. So, yeah, this is this is really 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 good. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially with the um, I think it's the, the when we talked about the goals last time. The there your unit actually becomes counts as being. Yeah, they are stuck uh, with it. Yeah, yeah, for the rest of the turn as well. So uh, this is a uh, yeah, this is pretty amazing. And on top of that, you also get a gorilla marker. So what's what's not to like here, actually? Yeah. All right. So we've reached the end of the board. I'm still a little bit confused about how I would exactly play this uh, this faction. It's kind of starting to dawn on me like you can. Uh, very very flexible you're going to spend your turn maybe not getting a massive amount of uh, additional uh, attack dice uh, if you're uh, if you're focused on getting gorilla markers but you can definitely kind of cash in some of these gorilla markers for attack dice i don't see a lot of defense here um so i think there uh, there were maybe lacking a little bit but like i think the speed here and being able to move in your opponent's turn or rest or do whatever is uh kind of going to be your defense strategy here am i seeing this right tim or uh am i completely yeah, I, misinterpreting it no i think you're right i think the the defense part is 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 pretty big in in the gorilla ability that lets you activate in your opponent's turn because that will always mean your mounted units if you play them right you can make you can make your opponent spend two more activations if they want to get close or your normal units make your opponent spend one more activation to catch them and yeah, that's that's obviously very very good. That's that's a one more fatigue on your opponent when they get there, or one more uh, ability spent on your opponent that could not generate attack dice or whatever. So, the the defense is might not be as obvious as in other boards, but I think it's in here big times. Yeah, sure. I guess even just resting the unit. Yeah. In, uh, in your good. opponent's turn, uh, then. Like that's basically like a plus one to your armor, um, effectively. So yeah, like there's a like you said, hid, hidden defense. Yeah. How would you actually set up a warband? I'm uh, 
you have quite a, a few options. You can switch around the... Uh, you have two abilities here with coordination where you can move a foot unit uh, kind of as they are, as if they're cavalry, and you have the soliferum, uh, which means you can... Uh, you can use one of your non-shooting units as a shooting unit for a turn. So you have a lot of flexibility there, but how would you actually uh, organize a warband? I'll be honest with you, uh, with you, I don't have no idea. Like, everything here is viable, I think. The Hearthguard on, on horses are probably very good with coordination and just attacking in your opponent's turn when you, they, like, they can pick a juicy target in your opponent's turn. And then the the warriors, all options except maybe the slings, which I'm which I'm not super super big on. I think are great. Obviously, having have a unit of slings, like if your opponent wants to get close, they act need to activate twice to get to them, or like they need to activate twice. Otherwise, they will be in range with your like the first first activation will be in range if they can just move medium or M, and that that's basically a free shoot for you. Um, because if they get too close and you have your, your slings can shoot L and then they they will have to take a shoot from you um, if they're not mounted, which is which is obviously very annoying for them because then before they can actually attack they get they get slinged at, but I'm still I'm not super sure about the sling ones. And then I think the levies with their javelins are are also very, very good with coordination and and yeah, so and bait, of course. So I'm pretty confident that a healthy mix of everything, maybe, and that's just my first interpretation like one and a half points of Hearthguard, one point of Levies, and then the rest like the three and a half points of Warriors. And then your Warriors, I think I'd pick their equipment so that I can kind of counter my opponent because I think the slings are, or like, so that I can, I can work. Work to play the scenario and not have slings where, where I, when in a scenario where I just need to run up and do stuff or not ha only have horses in a scenario where I kind of can sit and wait. So I, I, I'm confident that the Hearthguard and the Levies have just as big as a place in this army as the Warriors do, but the Warriors probably will end up being the meat and the biggest part of the army. What do you think? Do you have any idea yet? Yeah, I think um, I'm actually quite happy to hear that it's a uh... Like you can get a lot, you can pretty much go any route you want to. Yeah, um, that's that's always nice that you have a mix of of units and you're not kind of stuck into one play style. Uh, one thing with the gorilla marker as well is, or the gorilla ability as well. I'm, I'm just trying to kind of cycle through the uh, the war bands that we've already discussed, so I can kind of see them absolutely decimating uh, Numidians. Uh, since you kind of have yeah, to get absolutely. in close armor yeah. three, throw some uh, throw some javelins, but not actually that many, uh, and that kind of puts you within charging range of even yeah. units. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it doesn't even matter that you uh, uh, you don't actually have that many uh, abilities to gain a ton of attack dice. You're fighting armor three, so that's pretty brutal. Against Romans, it's probably better to to run away uh, and and kind of only engage when you can actually only uh, you're not going to get blended by the the Roman Roman maniples. Um, and then the Gauls as well, you can just run away before they uh, they throw some javelins. Because I'm just reading the gorilla ability again, so this is actually you trigger this ability after the enemy is activation has been resolved. So for example, with javelins, you move. And then you get a free, um, you get a move activation, and then you get a free shoot activation. But that actually counts as a second activation, right? Yeah. So you can essentially yep, yep. just could be like, no, oh, sucker, I'm uh, getting out of here. Me now. Um, yeah. And then you uh, just kind of scoot away. So you can uh, yep. that defensive ability um, is uh, is pretty brutal, especially if you're thinking about the Romans with the I think it's the pilum ability where they move up, yep. some pilums, and then they they charge. Same thing with the Gauls, with the uh, what is it, the chariots themselves, and then or doing the before the wave ability where you uh, you can throw some javelins from a non uh, non javelin unit. There you can also run away, and then also Numidians absolutely screwed here. So uh, lots of sneaky, lots of sneaky things they can actually do here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not just like with the Welsh, where it's like two or three. 
advanced saga abilities, you can you can definitely do that every turn and like with almost every important unit or probably every important unit. So the your opponent will have a very hard time kind of outplaying this because yeah, you can do a lot. And I think you said it before, but this warband, in my opinion, is all about picking your battles. Because you can decide if you want to run away or charge. And that that's kind of the whole theme. If you feel like this is a very good looking fight, it's looking good for me, then just charge. And if you think, ah, this might go wrong or this is definitely stacked against me, then just run away. So I think this is this it's pretty good. Yep, definitely. And um I I think Javelin orbed factions are gonna not have a good time here. Agreed. Or I guess composite bows as well. Maybe if uh, I don't know, like Skizians or something like that, come along in the following books. I think there they're gonna have some <laughs> some uh, some tricky things to deal with. Yeah, for sure. Or even even the Greeks if they pick up their Sarissas. Yeah. Because that's also an extra shooting activation, which which you can just run away from, or I don't know, shoot into, or whatever you want, really. Yeah, definitely. All right. I think they're, we've talked enough about how sneaky they are. Maybe yeah. let's talk about how we can beat these sneaky guys. I think people are going to be uh, interested to hear that. Um, I think one, one obvious one is that you just don't activate in your turn because they, they trigger the gorilla after you activate. But it's probably not the most viable, right. viable, viable <laughs> tactic. It might be a little bit of an own goal there, but... Um, what what other tactics uh, and sneaky tricks can you use to uh, to beat these Iberians? Yeah, I think I think important things are to bring horses because most most units from the Iberians, like the foot units, will probably won't be able to run away from horses if they were within within M, like. After after you you ended your move with your horses, then they can run away, and they're still going to be within within L for your horses to charge. So, I think you can definitely play. And one other big thing is that if you pick if if you make one of your units be in between two of your opponent's units, or like being being able to charge both, then your opponent can only pull away one, right? So they kind of have to sacrifice one of the units or decide for one which is going to run away or which one which is going to charge you. So if you play it right and ha have horses or infantry and you can, with one move or one activation, get within, within like charge range of two units, then that's kind of, kind of a big way to mitigate the whole running away thing because they can only, your opponent can only activate one unit after, or like do this guerrilla thing once after your activation. So yeah, what do you think? How can you, how can you fix this? Yeah, I think How can you beat them? Yeah, I think that's, that's, Probably the most viable way of doing it, um, chasing them down and just making sure that you uh, get rid of units. Um, but kind of, I, I, I guess the, there's a similar playstyle when you come up against Pagan Rust or something because they can block one of your units. So you always need to be able to charge uh, one unit, or like one of the, your opponent's units, with like at least two of your units, so they can block one, but then you can still get in a, another charge. Um, so that just takes up a lot of coordination on your side and a lot of dice uh, to maneuver your units to be able to do that, and it just takes a lot of extra thinking. So I can definitely see here you're putting a lot of burden on uh, on the uh, the opponent of the Iberians to line yep. up some really sneaky things. Um, uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be pretty tough and pretty. Uh, Pretty mentally intensive to uh, to play against uh, a skilled Iberian player, I think. Yeah, and I think yeah, you, you just said it. You just said it, but yeah, you can only activate each unit once with Gorilla. So that's that's a big thing. If you if you make them scooch away once, then they're stuck. <laughs> so there's there's definitely some some plays there. But one thing that came in mind when I first read them is that I might end up hating those guys more than Pagan Russ. Uh, and Pagan Russ are already pretty bad, in my opinion, for me at least. And so uh, so if I ended up doing the whole, if you can't beat them, join them thing, and signed up as Iberians for the next tournament. 
standard <laughs> standard so uh, i think it's fair to say that they're like the the huns of the uh, age of uh, animal right <laughs> in terms of annoyance uh, fair enough um yeah so pretty sneaky let's talk about uh, model options yeah so one classic of course for me are the victrix models they are good ish i think their helmets are a little weird to me. I th- I feel like they're always they're the. I held them next to like the non-helmeted dudes on the same sprue, and then other helmets from other factions with the same like from the gods, for example. And their helmets are so weird. They're so freaking tiny. They're like, I'm not sure why the Iberians had such little heads, but yeah, that just looks weird to me. But the rest of the models, they are they obviously look great. It's Victrix. They have great horses. They are. Uh, they have like. Stuff on their horses. It's not just not just a blank horse. They their shields look good. Their spears look good. It's their armor looks good. It's it's uh, they have that different like they have the unarmored set and the armored set and then they have armored cavalry and unarmored cavalry. So there's there's definitely enough in the Victrix range, in my opinion, to cover all the plastic wishes that you could have. But you kind of might want to might want to I don't know switch in some other hats, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I like the Victrix models. The issue I have as well are the helmets because they just remind me of like these little little moped helmets. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, like they just look really, really weird. Well, they do, me. yeah, they do, yeah. Um, I have them next to me, yeah. So I'm not... I, that was one of the main reasons I was not uh, not going to pick up the Iberians. But uh, I think there's a fix to this if you play Ruses. Um, I don't know if you yeah. want to go into that, but no, I don't. No, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I also quite like the gripping beast models. They have a, a range of metal models, and uh, I I quite like them as well. They have a lot of character, um, and uh, yeah, I mean they they look pretty similar to the uh, the Victrix. So if you don't want to go the plastic route, there's some some pretty decent ones there as well in uh, in metal. I agree. I think for for metals, and you know, I'm not the biggest on metals. I think they look pretty good, pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. And not, now that we're at the uh, buying, like which model to yeah, buy, buy stage, yeah. we're at the buying stage of the podcast. Uh, if you want to buy something else, the uh, the right dice for this board are the bar- barbarian dice that are used by the Gauls, by the Iberians, and by the Numidians. So, uh, big bang for your not so big buck. All right. I think that that closes off the the, the podcast. Yeah. Uh, do you want to let people know about the voicemail? Yeah. So after last week's episode, the voicemails have gone up, which is amazing, of course. But um, we'll, we we thought we might remind you once more of the number that we we have to to call us. The the number is plus four nine six four zero four. Eight zero three zero seven five six. Give us a call. Leave us your hot takes, your favorite faction in Age of Hannibal, your favorite ability of the Iberians, would uh, really whatever you want to talk about, and we'll put it in an episode. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Any tips or tricks on your side on either playing the Iberians or beating the Iberians? We'd be happy to uh, to hear them. Again, thanks a lot, and talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.